second round of shows we cooked. Uh, but you did, you cooked buffalo. Yeah, yeah. First, first, first. See, it was probably the second show or third show we made for pitmasters. It was uh, one of the meats was buffalo short ribs, um, and that was the first time I'd ever cooked buffalo and or short ribs. That wasn't real popular back then. Now you find beef ribs everywhere. But I did understand it, and I knew that buffalo is a very lean meat. It takes on flavors real quick. You mean like herbs? Uh, spices. Spices? Yeah. So we, uh, I knew not to hit it heavy with a lot of stuff, but it needed a flavor. And, you know, I'm going to treat it like I do beef. We uh, injected it like we would our brisket and cooked it up and... I remember one of the comments that the guys gave us up there on stage. They says, it tasted like beef. Really? <laughs> that's, that's good, because then it worked. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was going for. <laughs> and uh, the second time I cooked it, which, by the way, that's been the only two times, um, we was given a brisket. It was cooking. Uh, it was in the All-Star pit, pit Masters. It was down in Texas cooking. And it was a brisket buffalo brisket we injected it all up put a rub on it cooked it and it was fine but it was just super lean it, it was I don't know I just didn't think it was all that they liked it it was fine uh, Jamie Gear cooked a phenomenal brisket he won that whole episode he went on to win the finale so you know if you're going to get beat at least get beat by the guy that, that's going to win it all yeah <laughs> That's a good thing. So why do you think it takes takes the, the seasoning so well? It's I think it's just the leanness. I really do. The brisk it, it's it, it's real it's it's buffalo's really good for you actually. It's just the I think it's the cholesterol that it's in the meat itself. The it's 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 a low cholesterol meat and I do know that they've bred it in with beef have a product called beefalo yeah and it's it's a lot more healthy for you to eat a lot like venison uh, chicken it's a very lean piece of meat so just the absence of fat so the fat is the main flavor but it's also like the bad stuff that gets you yeah and it's also the the membranes the connective tissues that's where a lot of that stores not just necessarily in what we would look at as marbling yes it doesn't have much marbling but a lot of the cholesterol is actually in the connective tissues, not just the meat itself. Yeah, people, people, humans, we were in the last 20 years been, it's been beating our head to eat the other white meat, the other white meat, and they've driven the flavor out of the beef and the pork because of that. Now you take buffalo, it's naturally that way, and people don't realize that it's it's not just the the marbling absence. It's the connective tissues is where the cholesterol is. So it's going to have the same cholesterol as beef. It just doesn't have it in the marbling because there's not as much. So actual beef is not as good for you cholesterol wise, but lean beef is just as good. If you take like a, a fillet or sirloin, um, the eye of the ribeye. Uh, that's just as good. You can eat that and be just fine. Not just, you don't have to eat just chicken. I'm no doctor. I'm not a, a doctor of the butcher. <laughs> I just, I know what I know. And but you know your meats. So, yeah. the the difference between um, bison meat and, and cattle beef meat is, you're talking about cholesterol levels, you're talking about leanness and the ability to absorb the seasonings that you're yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. The muscle structure is a little different, obviously. I mean, just picture a buffalo versus a, a beef cow. But they're all in the bovine family. It's all in the bovine family. So, I mean, if you know how to break it down, you know how to break it down. Uh, it's still going to have a brisket. We will be shaped a little different. It'll be thinner versus a beef. It's the front shoulder cloth is going to be different. The, the, the loins are going to be different. But it's all basically the same. If you know how to... How to break one down it's all the same it's pretty well with everything uh venison uh, so when you okay so you're sitting there talking venison game meat 
when we're talking about game meat and like uh, oh the ability to absorb um, the seasonings based off of leanness and all that stuff so does your game meat pick up the flavors more intensely because of that as well if it's been dressed properly and I mean dressed not with a hat and coat uh, <laughs> if it's been properly taken care of of the time you harvested it uh, you can you can kill a deer and not take care of it and I don't care what you do to cut it up to clean it to skin it if you didn't take care of it from the beginning it's still going to be strong stout um, gamey is I think the word that it's used but will it take on the spices yeah I think it takes on salt I think you can just pour salt to to lean meat um, I think it it really it doesn't the, the to me, the salt content can be heavy, and I love black pepper. I'm a pepper belly. Not hot, spicy pepper, but black pepper. I love black pepper on steak. I love black pepper on venison. I've ate a lot of venison. I don't eat a lot of buffalo. Can't say I've ate but two times. But I do like black pepper and salt on that. And to me, it just, it works. Other things that, that work will to me is garlic. I love garlic. I wasn't raised in a family that ate a lot of garlic or onion or none of that. So right now, when I get it, I can pick it out because I know it's there. Celery is another one. We didn't need um, anything with celery. Uh, so the wild game, to me, yes, it accepts it very easily, but it, take, it can take a lot before it's overpowering to overcompensate for that gamey taste, right? Yeah, but you can get rid of that gamey taste. I mean, there's so many methods, that, and it works. Uh, you can soak it in buttermilk. That really helps. Um, you can take care of it properly in the first place, but sometimes just an older buck deer in rut is going to get strong. Um, we all know why, but that's just what it is. You can help take care of that there's, there's some stuff that you can do in your ground, ground grinding part of it. Um, obviously, you can't soak your hamburger meat in uh, buttermilk, but you can add some instant dried fat milk. Uh, put that in your grind, mix it in. That will help mellow it out a lot. It'll also help hold moisture. Absolutely. We put dried milk in all of our sausages for venison. That really helps it a lot. It, it'll, it's just a big... It just helps the flavor, big time, and it helps hold moisture. That's that's another big part of it. That's interesting. So I actually have a goat that I'm getting uh -huh. ready to butcher and have done in the smoke sticks. You think I will add? Absolutely. Milk? You'll see a big. Just go get some of the instant dried milk. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And yeah, let's see. I'd say if, let's say you can have eight or ten pounds of that. I would add probably a cup and a half, two cups. That's about all you need. Yeah, just mix it in with it. Just treat it normal after that. Go in, go in dry, go in dry. It, it, I'm sorry, wet, go in wet. We would mix it up and it'd kind of be like a cake batter thickness. Um, and then just mix it in your meat like you're making meatloaf. Yeah, yep, it really will help. 